Hello, everyone. I'm Braulio Dumba, a staff, staff scientist at IBM Research. Hi, I'm Ezra Silvera. I'm a senior technical staff member at IBM Research. Yeah, welcome to this talk. Yeah, title, yeah. Does my Kubernetes application need CPR? Performance evaluation of a multi-cluster workload management application. We are going to start this talk uh, with giving an overview of the importance and challenge of managing uh, workloads across cluster. Then we are gonna give you an overview of an application that manage workloads across cluster. Afterwards, we are gonna share our experience in conducting performance experiment in a multi-cluster workload management application. Show, show some experimental results and, um, and, and discuss yeah, some le lesson learned. Now I'm, gonna, now I'm going to hand over to, to, to my colleague here, Ezra. We're gonna e explain to us the motivation for this talk and provide us with some background. Yes, yeah, so hi everyone. I hope you are having a great time here. I'm very excited to be here. So as you saw, we are, talking to, we are going to talk about um, performance evaluation of multi-cluster a framework, multi-cluster workload management framework. And the initial question is why? Why do we think it's important? Why do we think it's interesting? And secondly, why do we think um, there is an issue that we need to actually resolve? So let me share with you uh, our motivation. So first, we already see a lot of people using multiple clusters. It can be for various reasons. Some use multiple clusters in order to better isolate and have better security between, for example, different tenants, different groups, different departments, and isolate them into different Kubernetes clusters. Another issue is compliance. We already see government regulations and other requirements that force you to use specific cluster or even specific location. Another uh, thing that we recently see is that in many cases, users and especially administrators prefer to expose special hardware capabilities through dedicated clusters, especially in the AI class, uh, case. Another evidence for the, at least for us, for the importance and interest in this area is that we can already see uh, several applications and solutions that target the exact same area, like Kubesteller, Karmada, OCM, and others. Regarding the, what is the issue here, so we all know that performance is a key factor in adopting such technologies. And this is obvious because users do expect their workloads to be deployed rapidly and get the status immediately. And they do not really care that this is multi-cluster, right? We want it to behave as if it's a single cluster. However, we actually noticed that it's not, not such a trivial task to do performance evaluation and even just monitoring across clusters. To be honest, I thought I will have tough job explaining why multi-cluster is important. However, almost everyone I'm talking with here in this conference is talking about multi-cluster. Even yesterday I went to the AI job, whoever attended here, and the speaker in front of full ballroom asked, who is using more than single cluster? Who is using multi-cluster? Everyone raises it. And we also heard about that in the keynote today. So multi-cluster is a fact. So let's go, let's see if this is working, yeah. So let me share with you some of the challenges. So first, many of those solutions uh, in the management of multi-cluster workloads are relatively complex. Uh, this is of course also obvious because we are managing multiple clusters, right? Or workloads across multiple clusters. Uh, they usually, has a, a lot of, have a lot of components, sometimes residing on completely different locations, right, uh, as we have the clusters, and they also uh, sometimes use different configurations 
for different infrastructure environment. Another thing we saw is that, and probably you all are aware of that, most of the existing tools, the performance evaluation tools, as well as the monitor tools, target single cluster. And when you don't want to try to profile or try to analyze multi-clusters, you do need to extend the tool or do some adaptation and we touch, we will touch that uh, later on. Uh, scale testing is another issue, a major issue. Uh, we all know, I hope you all know and agree with me that scale testing is crucial to analyze your uh, application. You really do not want to go out with something that will break at a certain scale. However, in this area of multi-cluster, you now need to scale clusters, right? You need to create multiple clusters, not just nodes. And this is resource consuming. I also need to add that we saw in many cases, and we will touch it later on, that emulation is not good enough. For some of the test cases, you really need clusters. And we will touch that. The last point I want to emphasize is that usually such solutions also offer a large number of configuration options. And this is not only because they are complex solution, on the positive side, it's because they are flexible. They want to allow you a lot of configuration across all the clusters. And this, of course, leads to a lot of testing option if you do not choose carefully what you test. And we will, I, I will give an example on that. So both Brado and I are part of the Coop Stellar project. And the work that you are going to see today, the testing environment and results, we're done on top of Coop Stellar. However, I do want to emphasize that the conclusions, insights, and lesson learned we will share with you today are general and applicable to all similar multi-cluster management tools. So let me go very quickly through some highlights of Coop Stellar because I think it will help us all and better understand our testing environment. So Coop Stellar is a CNCF sandbox project that allows users to deploy, manage, and configure application across multiple clusters. It has some unique capabilities like uh, the ability to use native Kubernetes interfaces. You don't need to massage or do anything to the resources. It also has a policy-based placement, status summarization, and more. Um, I'm not going to go into the details of Coop Stellar. It's a very nice project. I invite you all to go to coopsteller.io and look on the very cool and nice features of uh, Coopsteller. I do want to cover two main uh, architecture points that are related to the testing. So Coopsteller is based on what we call space abstraction uh, for multi-tenancy and for security. And basically, space is something that behaves like a Kubernetes cluster. So from the point of view of the user, it's a regular Kubernetes cluster. You interact with the space as if it's a Kubernetes cluster, use a kubectl, using Helm, deploy whatever you want. Um, so in kubesteller, the user interact with what we call WDS, workload description or distribution space. After that, after the user deploys stuff into the WDS, the resources are copied to the inventory space, ITS, inventory and transport space. And Kubesteller includes a pluggable transport mechanism. Currently, we are using OCM as the pluggable transport. The transport mechanism is in charge of propagating the resources from the WDS all the way to the workload execution cluster where the workload is actually running. The spaces are just the front end that the user interact with. The workload itself, the pods and everything else is running, uh, run on the uh, execution clusters. As I mentioned before, Kubstel also support customization of the resources while you deploy them into the work, as well as the ability to collect and summarize statuses over the work, over the works, yes. The second point I want to touch 
and basically the last, is the binding policy. So the binding policy is basically something that defines what goes well. In a sense, this is the desired placement, right? The user defined that in the WDS, where it associates a subset of the workload resources with a subset of the execution clusters. You can see an example here, uh, a, a section of the BIDIC policy where we define those uh, selections on the works and resources. I, I, I want to emphasize one point. Uh, so for example, the user has some, some decisions here to make, right? Those binding policy, we can use very few binding policy, each of which with a lot of resources uh, uh, in terms of the placement, or we can use uh, many binding policies, each of which with very few number of resources. That decision is crucial for the performance. On some use cases, one decision will be good. On another, the other option. And this, is, this illustrates what I mentioned before. There is a huge number, and this is Coop Stellar, but this is also true for all the other applications. There are many numbers of configuration options that you need to carefully uh, define what you choose. And the only way to do that is by having some knowledge on the performance. Someone needs to do performance analysis, like we will show, and advise you what you should use. Uh, okay, the last thing I want to do on the background is to walk you through how you deploy stuff in Coopstello. Now, this is very important because all the tests actually involve deployment. So by now, you're probably aware Oh, you're familiar with the icon, all the acronyms and the, the main concept. It should be relatively simple, but I think it's important because, again, you will better understand the tests. So everything starts with the user deploying stuff into the WDS, and it does that in a regular Kubernetes way. Deploy resources, pods, Helm chart, whatever you want. The user then needs to define the binding policy. You saw that before, which actually define the desired placement. As soon as it does that, the Coop Stellar Transport Controller kicks in and pushes the resources uh, into the ITS, into the inventory space. While doing that, the controller will also wrap them into a container object. Because we're using OCM, we're using, uh, people who are familiar with that, the OCM manifest work. This is a container object, but Again, if we are using different uh, transport, we can use other objects. The transport mechanism is doing several things. The main thing is first, getting those container objects in a regular Kubernetes kind of pool way and distribute them into the works. It then unwrap those objects and uh, deploy the resources in the works themselves. Later on, the Coops tell a special plugin, status plugin, will return the status from the Wex all the way back to the hub, to the Coopsteller hub. Now the last stage here is that Coopsteller will propagate the status into the WDS. Remember that the only space that the user interacts with is the WDS, so the user deploys stuff to there, and the user expect to see the statuses there. Remember that we have multiple works, so Coopsteller is also able to summarize statuses and so on. So this kind of a very short background on our environment, and I will now hand over to Braulio, who will walk us through the actual testing environment uh, we used, and also describe the tests and conclusion. Do you want that? Or? Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ezra. So as I mentioned, in the next slides, uh, I will share our experience in conducting perform experiment in a multi-cluster workload management application. We're gonna here in this talk using Kubestella as a use case. Uh, but first, uh, let me start with the open source tools. We use several open source tools to, to build our, our uh, performance uh, in the experimental framework. Uh, 
some, some of the tools yeah, yeah, most of us are familiar or, or here, I believe. So I'll start with Cluster Loader 2. Cluster Loader 2 is, is a Kubernetes tool that is used for, for loading and performance too. And this is a, from SIG uh, scalability. And we are using this tool to generate the workload uh, in our experiment. We are also using Thanos uh, and, the, and the Prometheus for monitoring. We are using a Periscope for profiling and the Grafana to visualize uh, the data and, and, for, and analyze the uh, telemetry that we are collecting. Uh, we are also using Kind, uh, that, uh, that, is a, is a, that allows us to, 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 to run Kubernetes cluster using local nodes. And we use that in our large scale experiment uh, that I will describe more later. We are also using Quark, that is a, a, a Kubernetes without kubelet. Quark allows you to attach fake nodes to, to a Kubernetes cluster and also deploy fake pods on them. Uh, we, also, we also use this tool in our large scale experiment that I will describe later. We are also using KubeBurner. KubeBurner is also a performance test tool uh, for Kubernetes. And it provides several uh, workloads uh, that mimic production workloads. And we are using subsets of, of some of those workloads in now experiment that I'm gonna also just describe later. One important question that, 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 is, that is asked when, when you conduct a performance experiment is how, how can I measure the performance uh, of, of my application? Uh, for our use case, we, we build in this uh, monitoring uh, setup to, to, to monitor both the, the core cluster and, and, the, and the hub or the, the remote cluster. We are using yeah, Prometheus and, and the Periscope yeah, to, to collect all the profiling and monitoring data for, for, our, uh, for all the components on the, on the core and the remote cluster. And to allow collect collection of uh, monitoring, uh, collection of monitoring metrics across cluster, we are using yeah, Thanos yeah, with, the, with the mean IO as our backend. And we are also using mean IO to store yeah, the profiling data that we are collecting across uh, all our cluster. Um, and and to, to configure those, those monitoring tools and, and profiling tools uh, in a multi-cluster workload management application, it, it, it can be a challenge. It's, it's not always easy. Uh, in our use case, uh, to configure the Prometheus uh, in, in, a, in a hosting cluster was, was, was not easy because of, of the nature of our multi-cluster workload application itself. Uh, in, in the core cluster, uh, our, our application provides spaces uh, that behave like a typical uh, Kubernetes cluster. So they have uh, the, the control plane of, of, of the Kubernetes cluster. So we had to investigate what is the correct RBAC that we had to configure Prometheus in order to collect uh, the metrics from, from, from the API server and the controllers of, of our multi cluster workload application. Now, having the, the, this arch architecture uh, and framework allowed, uh, allowed us to, to have a, a single pane of glass uh, to, to monitor the components of, of our application that are running both on the core cluster and the, on the managed cluster. And the, you, using Grafana, we build several uh, da da dashboards to collect metrics and then analyze the performance of our application. We, we build the dashboards for to monitor the, the API server, the API priority and fairness, and also to monitor the, uh, the performance of, of our controllers. Another important question that is asked when conducting perform experiment is how, how realistic is my test workload? Uh, for, for our experiment, we select uh, two, two, two workload profiles from QBurner. Again, QBurner is an open source tool that provides uh, workloads that mimic uh, production workloads. And we select two, two, two profiles for both Kubernetes and the OpenShift environment, because we use both environments uh, during our experiments. And, and the, the provider that, that QBurner uh, provides, I think, is, 
if they have extremely useful and the, that in the, uh, the open source community can uh, benefit from. Uh, and another important question when conducting perform experiment is uh, how should I generate my workload? Which function sh uh, sh should I use? Uh, for our use case, uh, we select the Poisson function because we want to generate random and independent events, but without uh, overloading uh, our, our application. And if to generate our uh, our work, work, work workload and the load to, for our application, we are using yeah, cluster load again. That is, is the two from SIG scalability. Uh, however, to use these two, we have to, to, we have, we have to, to do the following. First, we have to extend the two uh, with the uh, Poisson tuner set in order to generate the random workload for our application. Uh, second, we also had to uh, extend the, the tool uh, uh, to, to generate workload in the denatural uh, spaces. That those are the spaces that uh, are provided by our workload management application. So using uh, close, the cluster as it is uh, wouldn't allow us to conduct placement. So we had to extend and, and work with the, with, the, with the community. Uh, as as Eza mentioned in the beginning of this talk, in a multi cluster environment, the, I think uh, the environment is, is complex. There are just many tuning parameters that, that you can configure and, and play with your, with your application. Then it, it's very important to, to define and select performance var variables that you want to analyze uh, and you select them based on the characteristics of your application. For, for CubeStellar, we, se we select uh, several performance variables, and here I'm just listing few. Uh, but in this talk, I'm gonna just focus on, on two of them. Those are the, the number of bind policies and, and, and the, the number of workload execution clusters. In, in the next slides, I will show uh, three experiments uh, that are focused on, on those two performance variables and, and show uh, uh, the lesson that we learned. In the first experiment, we are using a very simple setup. We have two OpenShift cluster. One is running the core of, of our uh, application, and the other, the second is serves as our remote cluster. And again, uh, the, the verb that here we are focused is uh, the, the number of binding policies. And we create 150 bind policies and we associate each of them with a unique uh, namespace. And to, to create, and we generated these 150 bind policies in, in, in three subsets of 50 each, and the five minute interval between the, the creation of the next uh, subset. And, the, and the, for each namespace, we, we deploy the cluster des, des density profile. And the, the table here just shows the, uh, the total number of objects that we use uh, in our experiment. In this experiment, we detect an, an issue in our uh, trans transport layer. We, and and, and this, the, the graph here shows the, the working queue of, of uh, our, uh, the, our the transport layer in, in our application. We can see start from the, the graph in the left that we saw a cumulative increase on, on the working queue depth. And we all realized that this cumulative increase was associated with the number of bind policies uh, that we were creating during our experiment. And uh, we did some uh, investigation and, and we find out that this, this issue was, was, was due to some controller fight in our uh, transport layer. And the, the graph in the right shows the, the, again the working queue of, of, the, of our transport controller after we fix the issue. And uh, I'd like to emphasize that we, we, we were able to, to find the, uh, and easily identify the root cause of this uh, issue by focusing on, on a single performance va variable of our multi cluster workload management application. In, in a second experiment, uh, now we decided to run, uh, to do a, a long run test. In this test, we are using the similar setup, 
as we use uh, in our first experiment. But here we decide to fix uh, our bind policy. We are using a single and unique bind policy. And the, in this scenario, our work, workload is just a, a, a single pod that sleeps for 20 seconds. And after it reaches its completion state, it is removed and another one is created uh, with a different name uh, after one minute. And we generate, uh, we run this experiment for, for, for 48, 48 hours. And uh, we found uh, an, an issue. Uh, uh, during this experiment, we found uh, a mem memory leak issue in one of our uh, controllers. The, this is the, the status add-on controller. And this is the controller that runs on the remote or managed cluster. As and the, the plot here shows the memory uh, consumption of, of this controller. Uh, starting, starting with the graph on the left, we, we, see, uh, we, we see that at the beginning, on the first few hours of the experiment, uh, it wasn't very, very clear uh, for us to identify this uh, memory leak issue. But only by running this experiment for, for, for long, longer direction, the duration, we, we were able to clearly see the profile of the memory leak and identify this issue. Uh, so, and the, the graph on, on the right just shows us, uh, the, the, again, the memory profile after fixing the issue. But we see still on the, on the graph on the right that on the first few hours, uh, there is a, a, typic, uh, a co small variation on the memory increase, but we see a, a significant jump after running for long duration, but, but uh, that jump doesn't, doesn't continue to increase as, as it was happening when the, our controller had the uh, memory leak. Uh, this experimental re result just shows that it is important to run long run experiments uh, because there may be some issues in your application that you're gonna miss uh, without uh, do doing this kind of experiment. In our uh, uh, second and third experiment, uh, we, are, we, are focus, we are focusing in a, in a different uh, performance variable. Uh, this here, this is the number of uh, works or the number of, of remote clusters. Uh, to conduct this experiment, yeah, we will build the, the following setup. Uh, we, we create a, a three nodes Kubernetes cluster to, to deploy the control plane of our application. And the, for this experiment, doing, doing sim, simulation uh, alone would, wouldn't be enough because we want also to understand the overhead of deploying uh, our, our, the, our workload, the, uh, the agent of our workload in the remote cluster. So do, doing simulating a, a, a remote cluster wouldn't be enough for, for this test. So then we, we decided to create, uh, to use kind clusters because they, as we know, they have small memory footprints. And we generated 100 kind of clusters using uh, five VMs. And the, to, to minimize the resource consumption in these uh, clusters, we, we are using Quark to attach a fake node um, to, to this kind of cluster. And also we are using yeah, fake pods to, 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 uh, to, to run on, this, on these nodes. And we are using Quark, uh, Quark stages to emulate the, the life cycle of these pods. So from the Kubernetes API server point of view, this pod just behaves as, as norm, a, a normal Kubernetes pod. And to build, in, to build this, this setup, we are using uh, Ansible automation uh, to, to, from deploying the infrastructure to configure and uh, deploy your application. So this would, would allow us, us to easily reproduce our experiments and, and scale uh, in, in, uh, and scatter large numbers in future experiments. In this experiment, we, we, are, we are interested to investigate the overhead of, of, our control, of the components of our application that are running on the host cluster only. only. And it, to do that, uh, as, as I mentioned before, we are using uh, Quark fake pods and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, we, and we experiment with two different types of uh, uh, deployment. We start with the one-to-one -one, uh, deployment where you have a, a single binder policy and a, and, a, and a unique workload to deploy to each cluster. And we also experiment with the 
one-to-many deployment, uh, where you have a, uh, a single binder policy and, and a single workload to, to spread across uh, all the clusters. And uh, we recommend to experiment with the different types of deployment when we conduct uh, ex experiment in the multi-cluster workload management application. In this experiment, we, we, we collect several measurements like the end-to-end -end latency, the resource utilization, uh, the downsync latency, uh, but uh, here I'm, I'm just showing uh, one of our results. Uh, in the, this, this graph shows the overhead of connecting uh, 100 closer on the, uh, on, the, on the API server of what transport layer. And we can see from the graph in the, in the right that it takes about the uh, uh, overhead of two gigabytes when we have 100 closer connect to our application. Uh, the, the, to, to, to conduct the experiment, we use both uh, uh, emulation and, and real uh, deployment to allow us to exper experiment with the, uh, our uh, workload management application at, at scale. Uh, but the setup that we, 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 are, we build here can be used also to, ex to, to do uh, large scale tests with the other uh, uh, workload management application, like for example, uh, Karmada and the uh, OCM. Yeah, to conclude this talk, uh, I would like to share uh, some uh, le lesson learned that, that we, we, we did here with the community. Uh, first, uh, when you conduct performance experiment in the multi-cluster workload management application, we recommend uh, for you to, to build a, a single pane of glass for, mon for monitoring and the metrics analysis. In our experiment, having a single pane of glass was extremely helpful to help us to understand the end-to-end -end, uh, uh, end -end performance uh, of our experiment, and also to understand the performance co correlation between the components of, of our application. In our experiment, we, we also, uh, we also uh, came across situations where, where we identify the, 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 the wrong root cause of, of an issue because we are, we are just looking at the, the wrong place. Uh, be, the, because there are just too many tuning parameters uh, in, in the, in the multi-cluster workload management application. Uh, therefore, we recommend for you to define performance variables and analyze them because they are going to help you to better understand the performance signals of your multi-cluster workload management application. We also recommend for you to, 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 run, to do long-run experiments because there are just some issues that you won't be able to, to, to discover without it. Uh, with, uh, for example, the more leaked issue that we found in our experiment would be and, uh, uh, wouldn't be uncovered without it. We also recommend for you to use open source tools, uh, extend it and, and contribute to the community to, to help to build standard, standard tools for performance experiments. And in this talk, we, we saw how you can use the cluster loader, Quark, uh, and, uh, and QBarner to do a performance test in the multi cluster workload management application. And lastly, we, ha we recommend for, for you to do performance analysis in, in, in order to understand the performance correlation between the components of the application and then, do, and then uh, build the guidelines for the users of your multi cluster workload application. For example, in Cube Stellar, we saw that the size of the binder policy uh, had an impact on, on, on the performance. <coughs> now, going back to, to the beginning of this, this the question I asked at the beginning of this talk, does my application need CPR? <laughs> I'm, I'm relieved to, to tell you that the answer is no. Uh, I can see, analyzing here, the heartbeats of my multi cluster workload management application. And if you follow our guidelines, you're gonna still be able to see and, and analyze the heartbeats of your application. So this concludes this talk, yeah, thank you.